God in my living, there in my breathing, God in my waking, God in my sleeping, God in my resting, there in my working, God in my thinking, God in my speaking. Be my everything, be my everything, be my everything, be my everything. Very warm welcome to St Mary's Church for our worship today. This Sunday, the 1st of November, it is lovely to be with you. And we are continuing our exploration of the Book of Thessalonians. And so we'll be learning later on today about Paul's teaching, not only to the Thessalonican church, but also to us. And so we begin our opening worship with a prayer. And I'm going to hand over to Amy for this. Loving God, we gather together to praise you. Help us to listen to, live to your living word as it encourages us and urges us towards greater love for you and each other. Amen. So we come to our confession. Heavenly Father, we are sorry for the times when we have not lived your calling, when we've been distracted, when we've been self-seeking, when we failed to live with the integrity you call us to. Help us to learn to be your people and know that we are forgiven through Jesus Christ when we come to you in confession starting each new day afresh. Amen. Thessalonians 2, 9-13 Surely you remember, our brothers, how we worked and toiled, how we worked day and night so that we would not be any trouble to you as we preached to you the good news from God. You are our witnesses, and so is God, that our conduct towards you who believe was pure, right, and without fault. You know that we treated each one of you just as a father treats his own children. We encouraged you, we comforted you, and we kept urging you to live the kind of life that pleases God, who calls you to share his own kingdom and glory. And there is another reason why we always give thanks to God. When we heard you brought... God's message. You heard it and accepted it, not as man's message, but as God's message, which indeed it is. 
for God is at work in you who believe. The second lesson is taken from Matthew 23, verses 1 to 12, a warning against hypocrisy. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honour at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Here ends the second lesson. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So we continue in the book of Thessalonians and today we encounter the reality that Paul expresses the hard work that he has put into sharing the gospel with those who lived at Thessalonica. He writes saying, my dear family, you recall our hard toil, our labour, we worked day and night so as not to be a burden to you while we announced the gospel of God. Here we find out that actually being a disciple of Jesus Christ can be really hard work and I know how he feels sometimes when all our effort and energy, all our commitment goes into uh, trying to promote the good news of God's love. And sometimes we can feel a little overwhelmed by it all. But Paul says it's important. It's important to acknowledge the hard work that he did. Not least because it meant that he wasn't reliant on the Thessalonians for money or for support. We know that Paul worked as a tent maker. He would go around doing his day-to-day -day business, meeting the people who provided him with supplies, the workmen who enabled him and worked alongside him to, to make the tents that he made. He didn't take anything from the Thessalonian church, not because that's unacceptable. We know in other letters that it's just and right for those who work on behalf of the church to be able to sustain the ministry that they offer by being supported financially by the church, but because nobody could accuse him of doing it for himself, for his own gain or own glory in this particular circumstance. We heard last week how tricksters would come around trying to sell a new philosophy or, or teaching and it meant that people were tricked not only out of money, but sometimes out of, well, out of family loyalties or friendships, that they'd been misused by those who were teaching. Paul doesn't do that. Paul is offering the good news of God's love as a free gift of grace. That doesn't mean that it's not hard work. It is. Not only is he sustaining himself financially so nobody can accuse him 
of abusing the trust of those who he's sharing the gospel with, but also he's working hard to walk the walk, to follow Jesus Christ, to live a life of integrity. You see, so often in the ancient world, those who were following different teachings or philosophies or idols would know of all the sort of rituals they had to do to please the gods. But here we find that our God isn't like that. Instead, he calls us to live a life that's one full of integrity, that brings God's goodness to others. God doesn't look for his own glory, unlike those other systems of belief that were around at the time, like worship of Caesar, where all the suggestion around the ritual was that Caesar was the one who held glory and power. Instead, what we find in the gospel, in the good news of Jesus Christ, is that Jesus offers himself in love and grace to us and in doing so allows us to share to become part of that good news giving us both the glory of the words to be shared but also the power of god's presence with us and that means living a life that is full of integrity of honesty uh, of goodness so that nobody can look at us and say that seems an awfully long way from the kind of life that Jesus called us to. It means being able to forgive others, to make amends, to seek justice, to serve those who are in need, to be honest in our dealings with others, to be kind, compassionate, good and gracious. It must have been a real surprise for the people at the church of Thessalonica to encounter somebody like Paul. Somebody who can say that you've seen my lifestyle. It's blameless as God is my witness as you are my witnesses. I have lived according to the teachings of Jesus Christ. And Paul exhorts the Thessalonican Christians to follow in that example to work hard, to be dedicated, to nurture themselves spiritually so that they may follow the example of Jesus Christ in their lives. And they too might be known for their integrity. And indeed, Paul is delighted to see in them the evidence of the gospel. Repeatedly in Thessalonians, we hear him thanking God for these people in his church. That's what we're called to as well. And like Paul, I thank God when we see the integrity, the honesty, the lifestyle of those in our church that echoes the calling of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Lord God, we thank you that through Jesus we might know what it is to be your child. We thank you that through Jesus we might learn how to live lives that are marked with integrity and honesty. We thank you that through Jesus we find strength and support even when it's hard work promoting the good news of God's love. Strengthen us, uphold us and keep us on the path. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God in my living, there in my breathing, God in my waking, God in my sleeping, God in my resting, there in my working, God in my thinking, 
God in my speaking, be my everything, be my everything, be my everything, be my everything. God in my hoping, there in my dreaming, God in my watching, God in my waiting, God in my laughing, there in my weeping, God in my hurting, God in my healing, be my everything. Be my everything, 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 be my everything. Christ in me, Christ in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. You are everything. Christ in me, Christ in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. You are everything. Be my 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 everything. Everything be my everything, be my everything. Father God, we thank you that we are your family. You made us all different and unique and you love us more than we can realise. Help us to be brave when we're tired and help us to be kind when we are lazy. Help us to do things for each other so that we can remind each other of the brilliant ways that you made us. Today we pray for all who feel afraid or isolated for those who may feel left out or not good enough. This is most of us some of the time, but it is some of us most of the time. God of encounter, may we all turn with love and interest towards each other, remembering that we are never alone because you are always with us. Amen.
And so as we come to the end of our service, we want to thank you for joining us for worship today. To remind you that there's still lots happening. Uh, the Tudor exhibition is still here in St Mary's. So if you do want to see the portraits from the National Portrait Gallery, you're very welcome to pop in when church is open. Also to thank you for those who joined us for the annual meeting last Sunday and information about the elections and who's serving on the church council will be available as part of the weekly notice sheet so please do look out for that. We continue to remember you in our prayers and to think of you. Our reading next week reminds us that Paul desperately wanted to see his uh, friends, the members of his church, face to face and was not able to do so. It seems very poignant and we will be looking at that reading next week as part of our service. But for now, to remind you that if you do want to get in touch with us or we can help and support you, please do let us know and we're doing our very best to keep in touch with everybody. And so as we come to the end of our service, may God bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you now and always. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always, rejoice, rejoice, and again.